first story. The first story my father told me and the first story that I told each of you. In the beginning, there was nothing. So goes the most modern attempt to tell the story of Noah. Hi, my name is Stan. I'm the webmaster and editor of GodofGameTheory.com. We'd like to welcome you today. I'm sure at this point in time, many of you have seen this movie. Probably most of you have heard of this movie, and I expect a good number of you have some opinion about this movie, whether in terms of the theology of this movie or in terms of whether this movie is good or not as a film. The movie was directed by Darren Aronofsky, who was raised in a conservative Jewish household. Probably part of the reason why the production company chose him to direct this film was the basic feeling that having grown up in a Jewish household that he would have a religious take consistent with the biblical story itself. In fairness, uh, Darren describes himself as being a non-practicing Jew, a non-synagogue attending a Jewish individual. He describes his upbringing, although it's conservative Jewish, as being primarily uh, in terms of attendance to synagogue during the periods of holidays, Jewish holidays, sort of the Christian equivalent of someone who goes to church on Christmas and Easter and no time in between. So let's start off with the good in the movie. Darren Aronofsky has produced what I believe is a very compelling presentation of the creation account. It is very synthetic, uh, very appreciable. It's actually fairly biblical in, in most regards, and it incorporates some scientific understanding of the time frame in which the universe developed into the universe that we have. It's also a fairly appropriate Jewish interpretation in that it shows the creation account as having taken place over the period of many eons. We'll show you the clip here in a minute. What you want to key into with regards to the clip is how the days of creation represent a very extended period of time. They take snapshots of that period of time of the development of life, utilizing a lot of scientific concepts. Now again, this is entirely acceptable to Jewish theology, to modern Jewish theology. Frankly, it's also fairly acceptable to traditional Christian theology. For now, we're going to show the clip from the movie Noah. Uh, do pay attention to how it intermixes the days of creation through eons of time. I think it's very effective. Frankly, I think it's something that, from a Christian theological standpoint, we ought to embrace, not because we're afraid of science, not because science has overcome us, but because, frankly, this is what theologians in ancient history and ancient past believed in the first place. In the beginning, there was nothing. Nothing but the silence of an infinite darkness. But the breath of the Creator fluttered against the face of the void, whispering, Let there be light. And light was. And it was good. The first day. And then the formless light began to take on substance and shape. The second day. And our world was born. Our beautiful, fragile home and a great warming light nurtured its days. And a lesser light ruled the nights. And there was evening and morning, another day. And the waters of the world gathered together and in their midst emerged dry land. Another day passed and the ground put forth the growing things, a thick blanket of green stretching across all creation. And the waters, too, teemed with life. Great creatures of the deep that are no more. Vast multitudes of fish, some of which may still swim beneath these seas. And soon, the sky was streaming with birds. And there was evening, and there was morning, a fifth day. Now the whole world was full of living beings. Everything that creeps, everything that crawls, and every beast that walks upon the ground. And it was good. It was all good. There was light and air and water and soil, all clean and unspoiled. 
your plants and fish and fowl and beast, each after their own kind, all part of the greater whole, all in their place, and all was in balance. It was paradise, the jewel in the creator's palm. Now, it may seem scandalous to some of you to suggest that Moses and Peter might not believe that the days of creation took place over a literal 24-hour period of time. Let me quote some scripture for you. We'll start in 2 Peter chapter 3. You should remember that the word spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the commandment of the Lord and Savior spoken through your apostles. First of all, you must understand this, that in the last days scoffers will come, scoffing and indulging their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For ever since our ancestors died, all things continued as they were from the beginning of creation. They deliberately ignore this fact that by the word of God, heavens existed long ago and an earth was formed out of water and by means of water through which the world of that time was deluged with water and perished. By the same word, the present heavens and earth have been reserved for fire, being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of the godless. But do not ignore this one thing, beloved, that with the Lord a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. And uh, also we'll quote from the Psalms, Psalm 90. Um, it's the only psalm that uh, Moses wrote, or by tradition, that, that they have Moses writing. And uh, it goes, as, as the Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust, you say, turn back, you mortals, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, or like a watch in the night. So we see that uh, days, a day before God, for both Peter and Moses, were as a thousand years. Now, Peter and Moses aren't our only authorities with regards to proper interpretation of 1st Genesis. Obviously, they're very influential sources and they're very important from a biblical standpoint, but our primary resource is going to be Genesis itself. How does it use the word day? In Hebrew, the word for day is yom. That's what we translate into our Bibles as day. And for the most part in Genesis, yom is used to describe a 24-hour period of time or to describe daytime not necessarily nighttime as well but the time when the sun is out the root for yom is actually heat as in the heat of day so primarily yom is referred to daytime when the sun is out but it can be used to refer to a 24-hour period of time it is used in genesis to refer to a 24-hour period of time however it's a little bit more flexible than our english word day in that it's used to describe much longer periods of time as well now when we get into Genesis, when we get towards the flood account, we come across a character named Methuselah. Methuselah is a very interesting character for two reasons. And in the movie Noah, we do have, we do see the character Methuselah. Methuselah is Noah's grandfather, portrayed by Anthony Hopkins in the movie. The two things that are interesting about Methuselah, first of all, is that Methuselah has the longest lifespan that is mentioned in the Bible. His lifespan given in the genealogies is 969 years. Now whether that itself is literal or that's figurative is unimportant, but he's given a description of having lived for 969 years. In fact, the term that's used is that the yom of Methuselah's life was 969 years. You'll see it translated in some versions, particularly the King James Bible, as the days of Methuselah's life were 969 years. The days of his life were 969 years. The yom of his life was 969 years. Obviously, you round up 969 years, you get a millennium, you get a thousand years. A thousand years before God is as a day. A day before God is as a thousand years. One of the major themes of many of St. Augustine's writing revolved around God's eternal nature. And he placed a special emphasis on God's eternal nature when he described the Genesis creation account. His point, his observation was that God being eternal created time itself. Time was a creation of God. Now if time was a creation of God, how appropriate would it be for us to suggest that God must have created the rest of the universe through the time that he created? That is, that God needed days to create the universe. Now Augustine also noted a certain poetical structure to the series of days. It's technically three days of work followed by a day of rest, the seventh day of rest, the Sabbath. What Augustine noticed was that the first six days of the creation account could be split up into two individual series of three. Now the number three, the triune, has a particular theological importance 
in Christianity, and it is interesting that you can split this up poetically into two units of three, and it is fairly apparent that there is this poetical structure in place. Obviously, if the days of creation serve a poetical purpose, we immediately would question whether they ought to be taken literally, and that was one of the points that Augustine brought up. It's a very valid point.